Josh Peck, the author of Quantum Creation, sees the current segregation between science and faith as unnecessary and unnatural. He speaks to us today from Howell, Michigan. Thank you for having me, and very happy to be here. Josh, could you name some of the scientists from the past who've made great contributions to our understanding of science, yet would not be given much of a chance if they were starting out today? A great example is William Fontaine Murray. He uh, actually discovered underwater currents by taking the the Psalms of the Bible literally and made a a major scientific discovery just based on uh, Psalm 8. On page 24, you essentially call science and scripture two pillars holding up the true understanding of reality. What happens when they fail to agree? A lot of times we think that science and religion are just at odds. But really, it's the interpretation of science and the interpretation of religion that are sometimes at odds. So when they don't agree, we have to look at our own interpretation and think something needs to be fixed here, because if we have the right interpretation of both, they will both agree. So far, we've only referred to the main part of your book's title, Quantum Creation. But the subtitle is just as interesting, maybe more so. Does the supernatural lurk in the fourth dimension? That really caught my attention because I've been a fan of the fourth dimension since at least high school, and I've come to pretty much the same conclusion about it as you have. First, could you define the term for us? Most of the book deals with the fourth spatial dimension, which would be the dimension of space above our own. If you have a two-dimensional plane that's just the x and y axes, To add a third dimension, you would add the z-axis. From our perspective, it would seem that's all you can do. There is actually a fourth dimension. We just can't perceive it. Actually, I I postulate in the book there may be as many as 12. Josh, please explain why you expect to find the supernatural in the fourth dimension. There are physicists that will talk about the possibility of living beings from the fourth dimension or higher dimensions and what something like that would look like and how it would behave and if it were to interact in our reality, what that would look like. And by their own theories and ideas about it, it's angels and demons. That, that's what they're describing. They, they don't realize it. When I realized that, I got really excited. The more I looked into what the Bible had to say about the spiritual realms, about the, about the heavens, and what physicists have to say about higher dimensions, I, I realized they're talking about the same thing. Now let's get a little controversial, as if we haven't already. Hollywood has been telling us for years that those creatures associated with UFOs are extraterrestrials. Now that we've laid some groundwork, what's your explanation? When we see UFOs that seem to, they look solid, but they change shape and they phase in and out and they disappear and they do all these things that seem to break the laws of physics. It's because they're operating within a higher dimension than we can perceive, so it would seem like they're doing something impossible when really it's just extra dimensional. I personally don't believe that any of the UFOs we're seeing are extraterrestrial in nature, meaning from another planet. I believe that most of them are extra dimensional, meaning from another dimension. Speaking of ETs in Hollywood, you landed a great interview with Kenneth Johnson the creator of the original V miniseries. How did this become part of your book? Originally, I I was planning on writing a whole different book altogether um, that had to do more with uh, science fiction and in the mainstream media. That was the first thing that I did in the book. But the more that I looked into it, that really kind of crossed into other things that I was looking into at the time as well, the quantum stuff. Instead of making two books, I decided to just put them into one. I already had this interview from Kenneth Johnson. He was nice enough to provide it for me. So I decided I I was already going to have a chapter in the book based on UFOs and like these science fiction themes that come across through the entertainment industry. And I figured, well, that's a perfect place to have that interview. I think it turned out better in this book than it would have if I would have went with my (laughs) original idea. There were a couple other interviews included in Quantum Creation, but the one I enjoyed the most was with Dr. Ronald Mallet, who's working on another variation of the fourth dimension. Tell us about his research. 
Yeah, his research is absolutely fascinating. He uh, specializes in black holes and theories concerning time travel, and he uh, may have found a way to um, not necessarily send a person back in time, but send messages. And the way that he would do that is by bending light and, and gravity. Yeah, his, his research is, is phenomenal. Now, Dr. Mallet told you something interesting about a topic we've already discussed, the so-called segregation between Christians and science. What was that, Josh? When I talked to him about it, he said that we would be surprised how many Christians are actually is in the field. It's just they don't get all the airtime. Josh, you've done a fabulous job putting the quantum theory, the theory of relativity, and string theory into layman's terms. And you do it in a way that increases our appreciation for God's creative power. Thanks for visiting with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It was a blast, and uh, it was my pleasure. Everybody, you can keep up with Josh Peck by visiting his website, ministry.com. When you click on the sharpening entry on the menu bar, you can access his podcast. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.